hi guys welcome and welcome back to my channel so in today's video as you can see by the title I'm going to law school so this is my law school announcement video so the law school that I'm going to is Emory Law as you can see by the thumbnail yes I'm going to Emory Law I graduated college with a 4.3 GPA and when it comes to my LSAT score I decided against putting it out there so I'm not going to discuss it at all and my main reason for not putting my LSAT score out there is just because since it's July you know the term is about to start next month I kind of think at this point in time it's irrelevant and unnecessary to talk about my LSAT score because regardless of what my score was I got into Emory and I'm going to Emory so I don't think it's a big matter of concern for it to be out there. I got into three other law schools but I'm also not going to discuss those either. The reason why is kind of for the same thing. I feel like it's unnecessary to talk about the other law schools for me because I'm going to I would say the names of the law schools. But then I would turn around and go, yeah, but I chose Emory over them anyway, which I know that's how even the college process works. And I know that's how it works for law school. Obviously, at the end of the day, you just end up choosing one school over other schools. But I think at this point in the game, since it's basically for most schools, the end of the cycle, if their cycle has not already ended for the application cycle. When I applied, I just applied just to apply. So I applied to Emory in November of 2022 and then I got into Emory my acceptance letter I got in the beginning of February so took about like four months it was a long waiting period so anybody that's going through the application cycle that's coming up in I think it opens in September of 2023 of this year just know it could take a little while for you to get a response because it sure did take a while for me to get a response from some schools because even I just recently got a response from a school just earlier no just at the end of June and we're in July and that cycle starts well school starts in August so just let you know it's normal if it takes a little bit of time it that's kind of just how law school is it takes a little bit of time when i applied i fully 100 percent thought that they're probably just gonna say no anyway i was like yeah i'm applying but they're probably gonna reject me they're probably gonna say no so then when i got the acceptance letter in um february i was really honestly surprised because i thought that i was gonna get a no from emory me deciding to go to emory had nothing to do with the emory name because at the time, I didn't know much about Emory. I didn't even know about the whole, you know, their law school and their medical school being so highly talked about and so highly ranked. I really didn't know any of that. So I definitely didn't choose to go to Emory because of the Emory name or anything. My main thing when I was looking at choosing law schools was really the community because I did not have a sense of community at all in college. If you don't know, I just graduated in May with my Bachelor of Social Work and I did that program completely online so there was no community at all and I knew that when it was time for me to go to law school that was if not the number one thing I was looking at, it was at least within like the top three things that I was looking for when it came to me applying to a law school and me deciding to go to a certain law school. That was really important to me. So it really was the community and obviously the job prospects and opportunities after I graduate law school. Those were the main things that were really important to me and honestly the community aspect was way more important than the job prospects for me when i went to emory on admitted students day which was i think it was march 25th of this year it really just felt like you were at home and i knew after that day you know i kept it a secret for my family for a little while while i debated whether i was going to go to emory or not because i didn't want 
anybody's opinions influence me because at the time my parents already loved the school I didn't want my decision to be influenced by anybody so I'm the one who fully decided you know what school I was gonna go to when it comes to my LSAT journey I'm gonna make this very brief and short I started studying for the LSAT in junior year of college so I started it was November 2021 yeah November 2021 and I kept studying throughout senior year as well until I took my LSAT and I was studying for the LSAT while I was doing the internship and while I was in my senior year I highly don't recommend that because I was spread very very thin um never again well thank god you only have to take the LSAT once just to get into law school you don't have to worry about it ever again because never again will I um, do that to myself. If you could take a gap year, I 1000% recommend taking a gap year. Um, just to focus studying on the LSAT, I think that's a way better choice than trying to do it while you're working and you're in college or even trying to do it while you're in college, period. Especially junior and senior. The only reason why I didn't take a gap year, because I was really debating taking a gap year after I graduated, was because I knew that if I stayed at home for a full year, even though it was to focus on studying for the LSAT, I wasn't going to law school. It was not going to happen. I already knew if I sit here at home for a full year with no school, just studying for the LSAT, life was going to be too sweet for me. And I was not going to feel like I even want to go to law school because I'm enjoying my time at home for a year, not really doing much outside of studying for the test, which you're not going to study for the LSAT all day long, you know? So yeah, I already knew it is better that I just try to study while I'm in my junior and senior year and get into law school, you know, right after college. Because if that doesn't happen, I'm not doing nothing. If I didn't start law school this August, I was going to apply for my MSW anyway. Because the MSW is one year, so it's summer, fall, spring. So I can do my MSW in one year, the advanced standing one. I was going to do that. But what happened was the school I wanted to go to for my MSW was UGA. And by the time that I went on UGA's website to look at the deadlines and everything, there was literally two weeks left to submit the application and get everything done. And the time that I saw it, it we were already on semester break. It's obviously not in the cards for me to do my MSW. And when it came to the MSW and law school, if it's not clear by now, then it should be clear. I'm not doing an MSW at all. I decided that I was just going to go to law school and that's it. I was debating for months on end whether I was going to do the MSW first or do the MSW after law school or if I was just going to go to law school and that's it. Because at the end of the day, regardless of the MSW or not, I was still going to go to law school. But it was just a matter of, am I going to continue with social work to finish off and get my MSW, or am I not? And I decided not to. The main reason why is because at the end of the day, I'm going to be an attorney, and I'm still a social worker as is right now because I have a bachelor's of social work. So I think the MSW for me would really have been a waste because yes I might decide to work in social work like on the side but what I want to do in social work on the side I can still do it with my bachelor's so the websites I used at first I used Khan Academy and Khan Academy is completely free I would 100% recommend start off with Khan Academy since it's free you don't have to take nothing out your pocket before you go to all those websites that you have to pay subscription for every single month go to Khan Academy first and learn the basics and then if Khan Academy is not doing it for you or if Khan Academy is not working enough for you then you should go on to like the paid subscription websites every month that's what I did because Khan Academy I learned the basics but it wasn't doing it for me enough like it wasn't enough for me to really get the hang of things and grasp things so that's when I moved on to the subscription websites which is a big reason why you should actually start early like I did I started in junior year and honestly 
reflecting back on my LSAT journey, I would have started even earlier than junior year. I would have started before junior year even started. Like that summer, ideally, after I graduated high school, I would have started studying for the LSAT. Start earlier than even you think. Because I started earlier than even I thought and it took me a little bit longer than I would think to even get the hang of things. I used Seven Sage and Seven Sage was great for me. I loved it because outside of Khan Academy, you had, because Khan Academy only showed you the basics and videos for the basics. But other than that, it was up to you to like read it. But me, I'm somebody, I need to like see and hear somebody explain things to me. And Seven Sage was perfect for that because they have videos for every single test that's been released to the public. Today, I still don't regret using Khan Academy. I'm very happy that I used Khan Academy first and then I used Seven Sage because Seven Sage is not cheap. Um, Seven Sage was $70 a month. So I think I've pretty much covered everything. If you guys like this video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more videos. And until next time. <music>